Hello everyone, thanks for listening in to our video. Today we are going to do our very first of our talks. We're going to do a short series of videos and it's going to be called What We Have Learned. So the idea of this is that we're going to share a bit about our company, about the people that we work with, our suppliers, our partners, and you're going to meet some of the staff over the period of time. And some of us will be sharing some stories uh, around the things that we've learned over the years. And the idea is that our audience would get to know a bit more about us and that we can actually engage with you and you can see some of the things that we do as a business and hopefully leave you with a bit of information that you might not have known about us or the industry beforehand. So first up today, we've managed to uh, accost one of the directors, Peter Goff, <laughs> into having a conversation with me. Now when I say I've accosted him into this, he was always going to do it, but he didn't want to be first because he wanted to give other people a chance. But it made perfect sense that we spoke to Peter first today. And the reason I say that, Peter, is because you have been in the technology industry for a long time. So A long time. I thought it would be good to ask you, you know, you've, you've seen a lot of changes over the years, Peter. What, you know, I mean, there's probably so many. Is there anything that really jumps out to you, technology-wise and business-wise, that's been a big sort of stuck in your mind that's changed? Uh, I mean, wow, it's, it's a long time. Debbie and I were just talking before Debbie started rolling the camera, so clearly I was 12 when I started in this industry. <laughs> um, so I left school and I, I went into an apprenticeship, which was a, a technology apprenticeship, and I did that for a number of years, and then worked in that industry. It was more the electronics industry, and then I moved into what you would class, I, I suppose, as telecoms and IT, back when they were still two sort of separate things. Um, so being in this particular role um, with SVL for... for 23 years this year, which really does make me feel old. Um, I've seen huge change. I mean, so much change. It's hard to, it really is hard to pick out anything, you know, specific because there's been so many, you know, so many big moments during that time. The very first sort of sea change, if you like, was really moving from the analog to digital age. So when I joined this company, it was predominantly a call recording company. We specialised in voice recording products, voice recording solutions. And we had lots and lots of you know high-end, top of the range analog recorders within all different market sectors, from from private companies, finance, lots and lots within this blue light industry, you know the police, fire, ambulance type sector, and 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 many others. And the challenge that the business was facing at that time was moving into this new digital age, digital recorders, and we we're starting to see PCs, computers, and networks becoming part of that setup and having applications, or not applications actually, software tools that you would use to access these recording systems. So that was that was a you know a monumental change at that time. But then since then we've we moved much more into the software world where yeah. it, it really was less about the tin, although we still had, you know, boxes if you like, we, we, as we called them recording boxes, which were pretty complex bits of kit with, you know, different types of channel cards and different interfaces and different ways of accessing them, but it was becoming more and more about the actual software solution that you were using to access that, to you know extra extract the data from it and, and access the information that you required. So we thought we were selling solutions uh, and then there was a, a big acquisition of um, the company who we whose products we predominantly sold, which was Talos Contact Solutions. They had formerly been Raco Recorders and were acquired by NICE. And at that time, we moved into this new world of NICE technology and the difference in the what you would class as a solution side of it was huge for us. And it was a big challenge for our business because we suddenly had to get our head around a whole new set of kit and the, you know these software applications, a different way of implementing and installing these types of solutions. So that was probably the biggest change, I think. Certainly the biggest challenge that I felt personally. And I know that at that time, our technical guys, our engineers, we're all a bit worried about it. We discussed it at length about, you know, what can you do to sort of, you know, self-learn and, and put yourself in a better position to cope with this new type of technology. And all of them stepped up, you know, and, and they, they, they really did us proud. And then we've went through all of that, the evolution of, of just, you know, technology has evolved at such a phenomenal rate over, over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, as we all know. Uh, and now it's the transition to cloud. So we're talking, you know, talking about cloud so much. Everything is is moving to cloud now, and that's the latest sort of big challenge facing companies like us. Not just us, but lots of companies like us, um, because the whole thing is in transition just now. You know, everything's changing, and no one really knows how it's going to settle, if it'll ever settle again. Because 
back to the, the fact that technology is evolving at such a frightening yeah, rate. Yeah, you wonder what's going to be like yeah. in five, ten years' time. And it is you ever made a, a really interesting point there. You were talking about the staff that had a lot of changes to make, and that really jumps out to me working here because there's actually quite a number of people that have been here 20 odd years, isn't there? There is, yeah. I mean, they've seen a lot of change and they've, they've really evolved. I mean, if you think about now where they're actually looking at things like robotics, and they started off dealing with analog call recorders. That, the, the experience they've gained over the years, and look what they're learning now is. But they seem to embrace that. They do. I mean, I think I think I'm the only one that's over twenty years at this point. But we've got a couple of members of staff hitting twenty years this year, and we've got several staff below them. You know, hitting any, anywhere between fifteen and twenty years, which is a fantastic accolade for us. You know, that, that's something that we're really proud of uh, as a business. That, that you know, we've, we've got loyal members of staff have been here because we see ourselves as a bit of a family. Uh, I know that's a really cliched thing to say, but we actually genuinely do. Um, you know, everyone you speak to that's been here a while says it's more than just a job. This is, you know, you're, you're working for yeah. you know, a company that, that does feel like a family. And I suppose that's because we started out as a family. When I joined it, there was six people in the company and it was a family business. And we've tried to maintain that sort of ethos throughout the years of the organisation. And it's difficult, you know, that's a, that's a challenge. The longer you're doing it, the, the bigger the company gets, the more people you have. It is difficult to maintain that, but but it's not for the want of trying. We really do try yeah. and keep that, that th feeling as, as, you, as you know. It feels to me like that's really at the heart of the business, Peter. And even if you think about, we just had our, our annual kickoff there, and we done beforehand an anonymous uh, sort of survey where everyone had to put in their answers to you know questions that they might not feel comfortable answering out in, in a group. And as I say, it was confidential. The answers that came back out would say that that ethos that you're looking to yeah. have is really, you know, so with technology changing over the years, would you say that the ethos of the business never changed? I, I think, I wouldn't say it's never changed. I think the, the, the core ethos has never changed. It's, it's stayed the same. You obviously evolve and you adapt as you move forward because, you know, market forces, customer requirements, customer demands, you know, uh, you know, it just makes that happen. It's just a natural e evolution. But no, definitely the core ethos, and we were delighted with the with the survey results from the staff survey. That, you know, it makes us think that we're doing something right. We don't get it all right, or you know, areas that we could improve. We're a communications company, and yet we could improve our internal communication, and that's been something we've always been guilty of because we're so busy. We all care. We're all working so hard. You know, you, you sometimes forget to communicate internally. But uh, you know, that's it was definitely good. I mean, we had a conversation uh, when we were travelling down to London last week just about the results that came back from that. So it was great to see. Mm. Um, but you know, and, and it's it's good place to be a part of, isn't it? I yeah, think that's absolutely. that's definitely yeah. what seems to be jumping out from that. But actually, the fact that we've been so open about it, because a lot of times people do companies do these things, and they're not maybe necessarily doing them for employee engagement. They're maybe looking to find things out. But we've been really it's very open environment here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that that's so just thinking about um, you know we're talking about staff technology and you mentioned cloud there as well. Really hard question, probably. So sorry to put you on the spot here. <laughs> but what do you think is going to come over the next few years for SVL and and our customers? What what's what do you think the next thing is? You know, obviously we've got cloud robotics. Is it, you know, is there anything that? It's, it's a it's a difficult question to answer, and it's you know we these are the questions we're asking ourselves all the yeah. time. So the kick off that Debbie referred to, you know, we we put a lot of work and effort into the the content of that. What we wanted to present to the team what our you know, business strategy is for the year ahead and the years following that. And there are a lot of things up in the air, a lot of questions that we're asking, and, and, and all we can do is do our best. You know, we're, we're looking at the technologies that are available, we're looking at the, the way the market's shifting, particularly it's been driven by our customers customers and you know prospects and, and, and what their requirements are. That's, that's really everything we do is, is dependent on that. So we won't always get it right. Um, we have to get our own cloud strategy right with the technology partners that, that we work with and and also some of the stuff that we're trying to create and produce internally yeah. to take out to market and um, you know that's really key and if you look at just just elements of the industry for example uh, you mentioned robotics and we're working with a really good robotics partner who are doing some phenomenal things in the market these guys are absolutely experts on everything that, that, that you talk about with regards to automation whether that's um, you know, attended automation or unattended automation, so robots effectively. And, and it, despite the, the success and the growth of their business, they are telling us that in four years' time, their business will be entirely different. It, it might not be there at all the way it is just now, because automation is becoming 
a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, it's, it's like a sci-fi movie on the TV. The robots are creating the robots. You know, the, the, the actual technology itself is identifying where the need is. It's identifying where the automation points are. And it, and it's, it creates that. So it, it takes the need for the, the, the brains behind the outfit away. So they, they know that that's going to evolve and, and they'll be doing something different. And it's a little bit, so back to your question, you know, if we look at cloud and we look at how we service customers via cloud, so, you know, we, we bring a lot of value add to everything we sell and that's a big part of our ethos that we mentioned earlier on. We've been seen over the years as being true, truly experts at what we do and, and that's how we've built our reputation and we've grown that. It's about making sure that we bring that value add and we actually deliver it to our customers. That's the, the thing that means the most to us. And that's why we've got you know a lot of customers that we've had for many, many years. So as well as members of staff for 20 plus years, we've got a lot of customers, you know, high end customers, big yeah. names that, that have been our customers for that length of time, and for it, 20 we, and, and 20 plus years. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because we build relationships and trust know that integrity is absolutely everything yeah. with, with what we do so these type of customers you're talking about it's not easy to have a customer like that long term if no. you're not doing the right things and evolving and and moving forward but i'm just thinking of uh, time on a video here actually but just <laughs> if i could we, just, could we could probably talk all the else too, so. Uh, so obviously I, I know how proud you are of the business peter you've I've said to you before you've put your own blood sweat and tears in over the years yeah. um there's many many things that you're proud of but one thing i was just going to say like in this sort of ever evolving market, what do you think? Why are we unique here? What would you say is unique about SVL? I think what makes us unique is the people, uh, and and it does come back to that same thing we talked about. You know, probably most proud of the team that we built here, the, the, the team of people um, who've been you know with us a, for a long time. But not only that, the, the the people that were brought in over the last few years to add to that team. We, we try and get it right. We try and find people that we know will fit with the rest of the team. Um, because it just works. You, you surround yourself with good people. The success of this business has is, is absolutely been built on having the right people. And, and uh, you know, I was talking earlier on to, to a chap from a, another organisation we deal with, and I said that to him. I says, you know, we, we over the years, sometimes we're maybe not looking for a specific person, a specific role, but you'll bump into someone and you just know that that's a good person right there yeah. who could really do a job for us, who could really bring something to, to our team, to our family. and. I think that's the thing I'm most proud of is, is the, the team that we've created here. Everybody has the same passion. We we all we all buy into to making sure that we deliver what we say we can deliver. And I think when you say does it make us unique, I don't think it makes us unique. I think we would be arrogant to think it makes us unique because there's lots of really good businesses out there that have very similar, if not the same kind of ethos as us. But our industry over the years has been tainted a little bit with, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it in the video, but I call them hit and run merchants. There's been many technology providers out there who will come out and they'll, they'll just sell technology to, to customers for selling its sake effectively. And, and they're not there to see that through. They're not there to deliver that technology properly to make sure that the customer gets the value and gets the return on that technology to make sure that the, the staff within that organisation are actually able to use the technology and it makes their day to day job easier. We are very, very much about understanding what our customers actually need. You know, there, there's maybe some phenomenal new technology that we would love to sell the ABC company, but the ABC company is not ready for that. They're, they're, they're several stages before that, so we need to get the building blocks right. So we would much rather take the time, go in, sell them what they need, make sure we deliver it, design it first and foremost, deliver it properly, ensure that they are getting the benefit from it, and then that's how you build the relationship. You start the relationship with that customer, and you work with them in partnership for years to come. And that's why we've got so many businesses that we've yeah. been dealing with for so long. It builds long. a trust up, doesn't because it? Because it builds it's, a trust it's and true you, you account can management. It. That's one of the things, the team that I'm directly in, uh, I really like the team that we work with because every single member of that team is looking for what's right for the customer, yeah. which makes it a very nice sales environment to work in. So we're not like you say, these kind of hit and run. Uh, but I think we're probably running out of time. People probably don't want to listen. I know we could talk Sorry. all day, but um, so well, you'll hear more from Peter maybe uh, you know down the line in a few months. We've got a lot of other people that we're going to be speaking to over the next few weeks. Uh, so we hope that you listen in and that you enjoy. We'd love to hear your feedback and see what you think. As I said, we're going to be calling us what we've learned. Look out for us on social media. We particularly use LinkedIn most often. And if there's anything that you'd like to hear us talk about, by all means, get in touch with one of the team. Uh, so thanks very much for listening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.